it's, it results in what? Death. No. You see, sin is death. How does one become saved? You simply have to profess God, right? Accept him into your heart. And then do as best you can to serve God. Let me say this. There's things happening all around us. We see folks doing things that aren't right, and it seems like they're getting away with something. But let me tell you, that duration is short. Why is those people aren't saved? Why do they prosper here? It's all they have. If you live to be 100, it's short term. Short term. It's only for a short while. The Lord says, what? I stand at the door and knock, and if any man open the door, hear my voice, and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him. Here's where I'm going next. Everything has a time, a place, a purpose. Right now is your time. Right now is our purpose. It's our time to get saved if we're not if there any one, if there's anyone here who's not saved, today is the day of salvation. That the time is now, and then after we're saved, we have a calling, we have a purpose. Had to do all that we can to help lead people to Christ. Why? Because He'll be back. No man knoweth the day, the time, or hour, but there's one thing for certain: He'll be back. Here's next. I want you to know this, that all things work for our good, for those who love Christ, for those who know Christ. Even the passing of this child, there's good can come, can come from that. What good can come from that? Say, I know Lord. Pass, spread the good news. He's coming back. And it doesn't matter how old you are. And the Bible says three scores in ten, but it doesn't say that you'll get those. It doesn't say that you will receive those, right? And this kid, he shows us no man knoweth the day, the hour, or the time. The Lord is coming back. He's coming back for me. He's coming back for you. Here's what I found in this life. Our hope has to be in Christ. We know not what tomorrow holds. Our hope, our joy, our peace, our contentment is, is in Christ. What Paul said was he had learned in Christ that he could do all things no matter what his current situation was was if he's hungry if he abound regardless why how had he found that peace he found it in Christ he found contentment he knew what this life wouldn't last always he knew what was to come right our peace our joy is in Christ it, even when things aren't going our way even when things are at their hardest even when it appears that things aren't going to work out last night I wanted to sleep but sleep wouldn't come I tried it several times. Sleep evaded me, ran from me. I said, Lord, where is it at? It wouldn't come. He said, because this is my time. This is what you were called to do. When I get ready, you're going to do what I want you to do. See, here's what often happens. We want to make it about us. We think it's our time. And you may live for yourself, but let me tell you, it's what? A short time. We want to live for Christ. Why do we want to live for Christ? How long will we live if we live for Christ? Forever, right? Forever. Hey, the Bible says, if a man were to lose his soul, for me, he'll do what? He'll find his life, right? If, if, if you lose your life for Christ, you'll find it. And I want to say this. If we die in Christ, it's what? It's not loss, it's gain. And that kid, as I said to her, I was concerned it hurt my heart because I've got grandkids. I said, that would be an awful thing. But if we're saved, if we die in Christ, it's what? Saul said it's gain, right? Now stop for a second. I'm going to back up. Last night, why was I hit so hard with this? Why was my heart so troubled about this child? He's gone home. He's with Christ. Yes, his parents are going to miss him. That's a terrible loss. But where are we trying to go? Home to be with Christ. He's there. He's made it. Our mind, our goal has to be on the prize. Our prize is what? Heaven. To be home with the Lord. He's coming back. He's coming back. I don't know when. Tomorrow. Tonight. Next week. Five years, ten. 
That's the trick. Because you don't know when he's coming back. That makes today what? The day of salvation. We have to be ready. Watch and wait. If not, he'll show up when? When we're not ready. There are so many who aren't ready. Who they think about that three score and ten and say, well, I got time. Who said you had time? He didn't say you had time. He didn't say you had time. His will will stand. We have thoughts and plans, but if he shows up, got news for you, your plans just change, and they change fast. It occurs fast. I hear, here's what, I'm not going to be in hell, but, but, but I think when they get there, there's going to be so many folks say, had I had time, had he have gave me five more years, five more days, five more weeks, you know, I would have gotten saved. It's on him. No, it's on you because you're in hell then. Done. Look, it's closed. I'll be back. Powerful message. Powerful song. Man, George, you sing it. Amen. Here, we encourage each and every one to take part in our service. I want you to know, everybody's going to have a turn. A turn to stand before the Lord. And I want to hear him say, well done, my long, my faithful servant. What I don't want to hear him say is depart from me, Daryl. You, what you didn't accept me. I was denied by you. You lived for yourself. I was insignificant to you. How can you stand before me and say you loved me when you didn't live for me? When you didn't have anything for me, there was no time, Daryl. You you, there, was, there wasn't anything for me, so therefore I have nothing for you. Depart from me. In closing, I'm going to say this. All we have to do is ask him into our heart. We have to profess Christ and then turn from sin and live for Christ. How hard is that? And it's only for a short time. That's the good news. It's only for a short time. There's some folks say, it's in my life, I want to live for me. But it's short here and it's fleeting. It's going to pass. I remember now, it seems just like last week I was 18. Oh, I'm not even going to say how old I am now. <laughs> and, and I feel it, every bit of it. It happened fast. Old hair's gray, hand to face. I should shave, but I'm not going to hide it, I'm old. It happened fast. It seems as if it happened overnight. But he'll be back. And in my next life, I'm not going to look like this. I'm, I'm not even going to sound like this. I'm going to be able to run, jump, and I'm going to be able to sing. I'll jump like I jumped when I was 18. I'm going to sing like I've never been able to sing before. I'm going to speak in the words they aren't going to hang so up there. I'm not going to shut up. I'm going to praise the Lord all the time for the things that he's done for me. If he don't do anything but change this stutter, then that's enough for me. That's going to be enough. But there are some things, each and every one of you, as you sit out there, some things that have hampered you. All your lives, they've been there. But I got news for you. When we get to where we're going, if we're saved, you're not going to have to worry about those things. But if you're not saved, there's a lot worse to be concerned with. There's a lot worse to be worried about. Hell is real and the floor is hot. But I'm not concerned with that. I'm not going. Why? Because I know a man who can. The road when it's called up yonder, y'all, I'm going to be there. Mount Calvary is where it occurred. All of this is real. This is not fictitious. There are some people who tell you it's not going to happen. I've been waiting. He ain't showed up. When is he coming? Are you ready? My question is simply this. Are you ready when he does show up? He's coming. Why? Because I trust him. I, I believe him. All the things he told me he said in this life he would do, I've seen him do it for me. He's coming. I, I'm not concerned about if. And the trick is when. Are you going to be ready? I don't care where I ride on the bus, the front, the back, and in the middle. It don't matter just since I'm on the bus. How about the folks who aren't going to make the trip? Oh, my goodness. Mm. I leave you with this charge. As you go about your week, family, friends, if there be one in the building right now, right now is the time as you sit where you sit. If you're not sure, hey, today's the day of salvation. 
As you sit where you sit, it's simple. Just ask him into your heart. Profess God and accept him. And change. Uh, repent and change. It's something we've all had to do. So I don't want anyone to sit here and say, well, you know, well, so-and-so is not worse than me. I've probably done worse than anything anybody. But let me tell you what's so wonderful about my God. He doesn't care what you've done. He don't care where you've been. He doesn't care what's happened. He doesn't care about the past. He's concerned with tomorrow, right? The future. He wants you home with him. That's all that's important. Accept it. It's a free gift. He's gave it to you. And don't let anybody tell you you can't be saved. Oh, if I've done what you've done, I wouldn't go up there to the church. We want you here. We want you close because we don't know when he's coming back. See, if we can keep you close, well, we don't want you upset and mad and having those things that Satan wants on your mind. See, it's a place of love, a time of acceptance. We can all go. That's what's so wonderful about this thing. All my life in this life, I've heard it's not enough for everybody. Let's share this. Here's something, here's one thing in this life that's enough for everybody. The Lord wants everybody to go. He said, what? In my house there are many mansions. I go away to prepare a place for you, and it is there I want you to be with me also. But here's what's so sad. When we get there, there are going to be, there's going to be houses, there's going to be mansions that are going to be vacant because somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do. And it's simple. Selfishness, greed. I'm going to live for me. I'm going to shut up because hey, my time is gone. But see, our life is just like my time. Once I hop up here, I don't have enough time. It just happens. It occurs. It's fleeting. It's passing. I said, Lord, where did the time go? But it's going to be a lot of people once this is over. That's going to be their question. It, it occurred so fast. It happened so fast. I didn't have enough time. He's going to say, but I didn't promise you a whole lot of time. I gave you enough, but you chose to live for yourself. You wouldn't live for me. You wouldn't accept me. You wouldn't do the things I ask of you. So therefore, you are out of time. But here's the good news. We're all going to live forever. But my question is where? In heaven or hell? It's up to you. Now, I'm going to shut up and close. I've said this twice, and I know I've got that problem about closing, closing, closing. But let me say this to you. In many people's lives, and you know, you do not know it, it's the close of the day. It's evening time, and, and there's so many don't see it. There's no warning. There's no two-week notice. He's giving you a notice here. I'm coming back. No man know it, the day, the time, nor hour. It's here. You've been forewarned. And we see it around us every day. Folks are going home, all ages, all sizes, at all times of day and night. More people die in the hospital than, than anywhere else in the world. Here's my point. It's going to happen. But the good news is don't worry about it. If we're saved in Christ, to die is what? Gain. It's not loss. It's gain if we die in Christ. I'm going to close in prayer and I'm done. As we go about our way, let's spread the good news. Let's share. I close with this charge. If you know anybody who's not saved, stop and take that time. Take those moments. Even if you annoy him, even if they say that down, he's just always oh, he gets on my nerve. Let me say this. There won't be anybody in heaven who's going to complain about you nagging them. About you being wise as a snake, but harmless as what? A dove. Nobody's going to complain. There's nobody going to say, well, he got me here and it wasn't fair. It's not what they're going to say. Oh, I'm so glad they've done what they've done. Heaven's a wonderful place. I'm going to be here forever. Thank God he done what he done. Thank God he took time. She, he, or it, whomever. It didn't matter how big, tall, or small. They shared the word. They shared the gospel. He got me here. As we go about our way, let's take that time. I was sitting outside last night and bugs were flying everywhere. Slapping bugs, slapping mosquitoes and stuff all over me. That's how, we, that's how we need to be on people. Spreading the good news. Couldn't get rid of them. Everywhere I hit, still getting bit. 
We need to get bit by the Lord. We need to get on fire. We need to spread the gospel. We need to share. And we need to let him know that he's coming back. It's a good thing that he's coming back. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. I'm getting tired. I'm getting old. I'm getting gray. I'm getting tired. A whole lot of things have happened. It didn't seem fair. All over where I'm going. Every day is going to be fun. No more crying. I won't be mad anymore. I won't have to holler and scream. I can talk softly and the words will still not hang. It's going to be a wonderful time. Why? Because I'm going to be home with Christ. Lord, as we go about our way, I just pray that each and every one here, Lord, as we, as we see these folks who are not saved, that we will stop and share and spread the good news and let them know, Lord, it's a fact. It's going to happen. It's going to occur. We just don't know when. You will be back, and you will be back for us, for those who are saved and those who aren't. They're going to hell, Lord, and hell's a terrible place. Here's what we want to share, Lord, as we go about our way. I just I pray that each will stop and share and spread that good news. And in your name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Oh.